It's 7.20, so I slept in, which is nice. I've been getting up at like 5.30 every morning. Looks like it's uh, going to be a great day. I'm going to do some fishing along the way, kind of meander, take my time, um, so I'm not rushing. I'm going to slowly pack up. Uh, I don't even know if I'm going to eat yet. I'm still not that hungry, but I should have something, uh, maybe just some oatmeal, and then uh, get on the water. This is what I've been doing. I'm rolling them tight like this, and then I'll take the sock and roll them over top. And that seems to be working. I've had nothing getting underneath, like on my ankle or in the inside of the pant from this point. It's pretty good. I'm wearing my camp socks now. These are my last pair of dry socks since this is my last day. But those other uh, merino wool socks that I had that were fuzzy and thick, um, seem to do a real good job of, uh, the ticks like to latch onto those socks a lot better than these ones. But, uh, anyways, useful little tip if you want to try to stay tick free. Just all packed up and uh, gonna have an oatmeal, some coffee, the coffee I'll bring with me in the canoe. Gluten free bro bro's uh, oatmeal, so this is fruit and nuts and seeds. It's good, but I do think everything tastes just a little better in the outdoors. I gotta uh, fill the water jugs, purify some water, set up the fishing rod try to catch some fish and then if I'm lucky enough I can uh, have a shore lunch uh, just before I leave. That'd be perfect scenario. Catch a couple uh, fish, find an empty campsite, have a fire and uh, that'd be a good uh, end to the trip. Now heading uh, south towards Caddy Lake. Beautiful day. It's hazy, like overcast, but the sun's out a little bit. And uh, slight breeze, I think, from the northeast. So nice. It's gonna be a nice paddle. So I'm headed towards North Cross. I'm on Sailing Lake now. North Cross. Then into South Cross, and then Caddy Lake. throw my line in this is weedy little point that looks interesting so could be uh some walleyes hiding in there or pickerel is commonly referred to in manitoba there we go i knew it fish on Doesn't feel very big though. Oh, did it come off? No. Just a little jack. A little hammer handle. 
It's a little guy about 12 inches. Oh, it's something. My first fish on Sailing Lake. There we go. There's got to be some walleye in there. And take another pass through there. Fish on. Oh, he got off. Thinking it's just another little jack. This is a real nice spot. The uh, channel that goes connects sailing to Cross, North Cross. It's calm, quiet. You hear the birds. I was hoping to get a video of the beaver that was summoned by, but he didn't like me very much and took off right away. Oh, my mistake, I was just looking at the map. It's, uh, or my GPS is a bit more detail than the white shell map. Or a lot more detail. Anyways, this is still Sailing Lake. And uh, I don't cross over into uh, North Cross just yet. Almost there. We got a nice little campsite here. Not a lot of room for tents, and it's not the flattest ground, but it's nice and kind of sheltered beautiful part of the lake. Another campsite, you can see a picnic table up there. Not too far from the other one I just showed. Another beautiful spot. I just had a hit there. I wonder if something's following my, my lure. Here, fishy, fishy, fishy. Of course, the camera's on, it's not gonna bite. I had a fish on, but I lost it. Here, fishy, fishy. Come on. Meh. I'm at the portage to North Cross, or close to it. It's just around in the other bay there. Uh, but the big group that had a a motorboat and a, pulling a canoe and they were camped across from me or beat me to it so I can give them a little time in the meantime there's uh, some rapids up here I'm gonna come up here and uh, do a little casting see if I can catch something in the base of the rapids here looks interesting oh and the uh, the guys from the campsite yelled across when I was setting up they offered me a beer to come over uh, anytime, but uh, I was just tired at that point. I still had to set up, and then the thought of getting in the canoe in the dark, you know, plus I don't drink, so <laughs> one beer would have just put me over the top. Well, this is a real nice spot. Kind of remember, reminds me of uh, springtime on the Robert River. Coming up to the rapids, and then uh, we'd have a little anchor, something like that, to keep us in place. Uh, do some casts, maybe I'll throw in a jig or two, see how this goes. Get moving on. I'll try some fishing by the portage there. So, not getting any hits. So, it could be the bait that I'm using, the lure. I was catching with the other one, so I figured that would work, but uh, maybe this is not, the feed's not on right now. Who knows?
portage. So these guys are just finishing up. Quite a few boats here. Still getting the odd wood tick. So these are in my, in my canoe. Even the clothes that I checked thoroughly, I put in a bag and when I open it up, there's a couple ticks in there. So, so easy to miss. That's a short portage. I don't know. I didn't even measure it. 40, 50 meters. But I'm just going to have a look a little closer at the, the falls here. Oh, I think I'm uh, portage free now. That was a nice little one. Easy portage, a little bouldery. Anything bigger than my, my canoe and you'd be struggling. Those guys in front of me were just dragging that aluminum canoe with all the gear over the rocks because that'd be, you wouldn't get very close to shore. But uh, all in all, good portage. Last one, I think I just have the two tunnels to go through and then I'm, I'm good. It's about 11.30, so now would be the time to catch some fish and have a short lunch. Ah, oh, that's a pretty serious uh, beaver lodge there. I'm changing up my lure. This one goes a little, dives a little deeper. Took that page out of John's book from Lost Lakes uh, YouTube and uh, took the one triple hook off. So. Less uh, opportunity to tangle. And when you're in a canoe, sometimes if you've ever been there with your painter lines or your grab loops and you get the lure stuck on there, you're hooped pretty much when that happens. You either gotta cut the line and uh, tie on a new lure or go to shore and untangle it. So it's happened to me a few times. thinking about changing the lure and then I got a couple taps there oh, I might change up my lure this ain't working just as I was reeling in I got it hit oh there he is he was watching it fighting like a jack though but something Definitely a jack. Oh, definitely feel it on a short rod like this. Oh. Oh. So having a big jack in a canoe can get dicey. Oh, oh boy, it's a big. Oh, Whew. it's a big one. <laughs> 
Holy crap. Just caught on the lip here. There we go. He's about 34 inches, almost the length of the tape. Look at this guy. Woo! <laughs> that is awesome. Can't even get him in the full picture. I'm gonna let him go. Whew. Oh yeah, he's gone. That was fun. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to measure, but yeah, about 34 inches. Almost to the end of the tape. Had to measure from the outside of the canoe and just eyeball it, so. Let's quickly show you uh, Here's some people that are quite loud. Um, my fishing bag. Got everything I kind of need in there. Uh, pliers, which is tethered here. Rod holder. Now this was a cheapie, it was like 10 bucks or something on Amazon. Um, it works for now. I gotta put a little bungee on it here because it'll fall off when I'm portaging. Um, and this little clip here always comes off. It just doesn't lock in place and stay. So get what you pay for. Um, got my GPS there. So you can see when you get a big fish, there's not much room to, to work with. That's my uh, kind of selfie stick there. And uh, yeah, that's about it. This is for from a mountain bike. So it allows me just to adjust. Um, gives me different options for attaching things. And, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's about it. And my fishing net folds down and clips under my seat with those gear ties for easy, uh, portaging. It's also what I heard about, uh, it's a lot of boat traffic on here, obviously. There's no portaging. Oh, wow. It's like a whole fleet. That's the second one. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of boat traffic, which is alright. It is what it is. Um, good option though, if you want to come and pack a bit more gear and not uh, portage. Um, this finding a campsite during peak time might be a challenge. Well, not too bad of a week. <laughs> Ooh, a little rolly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it looked like big groups. Looks like. Almost like day trippers, maybe. Uh, which is good to see. It's nice to see people get out, join outside, to have uh, access. I mean, portaging and going in the backwoods where I went is not for everybody for sure. But yeah, if I took my wife and kids on that, you know, someone would have died because the amount of ticks. We went to St. Malo Provincial Park once for a hike, and there was a meltdown where they had a tick. And then they they panicked and took off and I couldn't find them and they were lost. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit of a gong show. But anyways, this is a nice area. Really nice. Definitely be coming back. It's right where I was paddling. It was floating in the water. Like don't bring glass in the backcountry, people. I don't care if it's boat access or not. Why throw in the water? Probably just littered with tin cans and glass at the bottom of the sleep. Well, the bottle ran into the right guy because I'm taking it. I could probably make some money just turning in all the beer cans and bottles that I find. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. <laughs> Garbage around like that. A man and a woman passed by in one of the square stern canoes. And uh, 
riding pretty low. <laughs> a lot of gear in there, but uh, that's the way to do it, I guess. If you got access with a motor, motor, you don't have to think too hard about packing too much in the gear that you have. Most people leaving on the Monday, so I bet it's not so bad when you start hitting during the week. So it's uh, I may test it out one time just to uh, see how the traffic flow is. Some boats coming up behind me. I'm just feeling like they'll zip right beside me. <laughs> Hopefully they have some boat etiquette. Well, they slowed down a bit, but they each went on either side of me, so I mean, gonna steer it just the So, I mean, not the smartest play, like, just stick to the same stuff. <laughs> they're all waving at me, so they're, you know, nice people, they're just newbies, I think. <laughs> they're uh, doing esterns and all kinds of stuff in the water, so I think they're just giving their passengers a good time. They just had a big hit and then it let go. I think it took my whole lure. I was getting up right to this point, kind of like the one where I caught my last jack. Yeah, I think my lure's gone. I mean, I'm not fishing with a leader. I didn't think I had to. Yeah, it's gone. Cause this is like uh, 40 pound spider wire. So usually it could take a bite or two. I'm wondering that last jack, if it uh, weakened the line. So that could have been the case. So I'm gonna make sure I cut off about 10 inches or so. Fish on, I think. Jack. Oh, nice size. Nice size. Oh, there he goes. the other one that was probably like 25 26 inches but then nice the joe works for jack so just always check the line and the hook yeah that seems okay something tell me tells me this is the fishing spot right there <laughs> Had a big bite. I'm coming up on the uh, tunnels pretty soon. Definitely don't want to be going quick through here. new guys we got more options Here's the tunnel just switched over to my paddle not sure how much room is in there. It's enough room for a kayak paddle, I'm guessing, with like, all the motor boats that go through. But, uh, it kind of feels nice having a paddle again. So much lighter. Got a pretty good current coming through here. 
apparently I forgot how to day stroke. Cool, going through the tunnel. It's neat, lots of swallows in there, and it's just a just pretty cool, cool feeling. High water, that might be a little bit of a challenge. You get more flow rate and less uh, headroom too. So you definitely want to be sure that you can make it through. This shot. Nice. So you see behind me, right along these weeds like this, I always hit walleye on there, almost always anyways. Right on. Just thinking about eating soon. Look at that. Beautiful. I'm gonna get them on the stringer and then uh, try to catch another one. So you could use like rope or a different kind of stringer um, to tie them on, but I know this is a little heavier, but I do like the metal because I can clean it and get rid of the scent. So I took off a bunch of the rings, I only got maybe three on here. And there we go, just like that. Just 
caught him on the side. This is the little guy. Just past the canoe. You can see him back there. Complimented on my clipper. He said he liked those ones. Um, but they weren't wearing any PFDs. So, I mean, some people do, some people don't, but I say wear them. Especially, it's uh, still spring. I mean, the water is pretty cold. I mean, even in uh, summertime, if you stay in the water long enough, you still get hypothermia. So, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't risk it. And there's some wind today, too. So, you get a couple of gusts. And just one more thing to worry about. Especially, like, you might be okay, but your gear's floating away and you got all this stuff to do. The last thing you need to worry about is being able to float and tread water. So, anyways, put them on. The peeps. Fish on. Just threw my line in the water after paddling for quite a while. Oh. <clears throat> Pulling like a jack. There you go. Nice guy. Make sure he goes in the water. He's just about to lost my fish around here. Oh, there he goes. We'll cramp quarters here. Fish on. Oh, he got off. Felt like a walleye, too. Let's see, get that. I'm gonna go through there again. Fish on. Even a little like head shake kind of feels like a pickerel. No, oh, no, it's a snake. By that I mean jackfish. The jack are definitely winning today. You know, one walleye. lost one and it flipped out of the water and I saw it was gold. It was a walleye. Crap. This is shout out to Clipper Canoes. I've had three compliments on the canoe already on this trip. How everyone says they love those canoes. The, this canoe. And then I saw a group of uh, a kayak with a few canoes uh, coming down the middle of the lake and all of a sudden the kayak started coming straight towards me. So I'm like I thought it was a CEO in a kayak or something that, uh, I don't know why he'd be in a motorboat, but uh, he just beelined it for me and yeah, it was this guy who was just asking me about how I liked it. He goes, is that a clipper? He's asking me what I liked about it and uh, what I didn't like and things like that. Which I didn't really have anything to say. I love everything about it. I wish it was a little wider on the beam and stuff, but then that's a trade off of the speed agility and adds a few more pounds on portages, so not really a bad thing. It's catching a bazillion Jacks and finally a walleye. It's a little too big though. It's 19 inches. Just long. It's weird that other one I got earlier was fatter. It looked bigger, but it wasn't as long. Let's go skinnier and longer. It's too bad. Let's target that 17 and a half because I think there's that slot size regulation here. Anything over that should be released. Pretty sure that's how it is, but I don't really want anything bigger than that if it isn't. Anyways, I like the 14 to 17 inch range. Those are nice eaters.
crossing the lake, I thought oh, I might as well throw my line and see what happens. Look at that, crappy. This is only the second one I've ever caught. So there's a max size of 35 centimeters. This falls under that. Um, so this is great in addition to my uh, walleye. Shore lunch, yeah baby. I try to get away from civilization, but uh, I don't know, something about the train is calming. I don't know what it is, maybe just because it's such a rich history with the railroad. Nostalgia or something, I don't know. You know, when you used to just get around in a canoe, it's the main mode of transportation. And then rail, maybe that has something to do with it. It's more closely connected. Anyway, just how I'm feeling. Campsite here. And occupied. So it's for lunch time it is. Right on. Hey, the group just left the site. Well, a little garbage there. Like fresh apple core. Like, you really want bears to keep coming by? <laughs> Glass bottle. Garbage, so, I mean, come on, people. So there's no grill on this fire pit, but I think I could, uh, there's enough room to build a small fire and get my fry pan. Uh, so I'm going to fillet the fish, fry them up, and get moving. Um, my phone is about to die, so I'm not taking much video of this. I had my charger out in my iPhone cord and it fell out when I was getting out of the canoe and the tip went in the water. So uh, I gotta let that dry before I can charge her up. So good. Amazing. Well worth the effort today. Caught a lot of fish. <sniffs> Yummy. Oh, that was an epic shore lunch. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. It was a little hard getting the fire going, but I used a bellow, which I've never used before, and man, that thing's amazing. You gotta get one. Way better than just blowing and having your eyes burn from all the smoke. Uh, game changer. But uh, it took a while to get going. I had to hold it by hand just because of the slope. And then when it got hot enough, I was able to fit it. Luckily, the fire pit wasn't uh, too wide. So it worked out. And then I just quickly cleaned up the campsite and filled a, like a grocery bag full of garbage. So I know what they were doing. You know, and just burn it. But I mean, it takes a lot of high heat and time to burn metal. So. I don't know why you just, and it's aluminum, it's light, so just flatten it and pack it out. I mean, there's no portages uh, to Caddy Lake, so you might as well just take it out. Um, and aluminum's recyclable one for one. I mean, not like plastics or glass or some of the other stuff. That all gets recycled. Anyways, off my soapbox now. Onto the tunnel and uh, Caddy Lake my van and then home Woohoo! actually looking forward to sleeping in my own bed and seeing my wife and my kids i miss them so can't wait for that approaching the tunnel you can see that bag of garbage <laughs> i got in the, the bow danger sound horn yield to ongoing boats i don't have a horn i guess a whistle will have to do Oh, tunnel time. It's pretty cool how, like, we could just drill a hole to the side of uh, the rock. I mean, Pretty cool, the engineering that got behind this. Oh, 
not bigger than the second tunnel. That's for sure. Hello. Echo. That was fun. Cool feeling going through there. It'd be nice to spend some time there and take some cool photographs, but with my uh, DSLR. Got to get moving. I'm ready to launch. It took uh, longer than I thought. I think the wind. It was right into the wind the entire way, so I could work pretty hard. And took my time fishing though, and I slept in, so it was probably the perfect day. Best day that I've had on the trip as far as fishing and, and stuff like that, so it was good. Would have been nice to have a fire last night if I had a proper campsite. But uh, all in all, great trip. Uh, look forward to looking through the video and, and uh, sharing it channel. Looking forward to getting